Now for the last 10 years or so, since 2009, we've had a very easy market due to the zero interest rate environment. So now this is the winding down period with rates breaking out of 3%. We're facing the inevitable. So there's really a big risk. Well, it's not really breaking out yet. If S&P goes below 2.5, NASDAQ goes below 6.3, 6.2, that can potentially be the major top forming in these global markets. Now, here's the thing, though. Um, when there was talk of raising rates in 2013-14, mm. yeah. this was during the time of taper tantrum, yeah, actually. Yeah. We saw markets react quite violently. And this time around, there, people were saying that, yeah, I think markets are a little mm. prepared now because the, the, the Fed and the central banks around the world mm. have given enough, uh, um, I guess, a word or, or, uh, or warning out there that mm. they're going to start tightening rates. So they say it's priced in. But judging mm. by how these corrections have been moving, across the world also. Mm. Um, it doesn't seem to be the case. Do you think that markets are prepared for the inevitable tightening of monetary policy? Well, in a perfect world where they do it progressively and gently. Which they're trying to do. To yeah, yeah. Honest, yeah. That, that, that's cool. But as, at a certain point, it would be unsustainable. So th we have to also put room for consideration of what if there's something unexpected that would happen in, in the global rate global rates and what things what unexpected things might per, you be prepared perhaps for, if they raise above 25 bips any raise 50 bips higher over time and the thing here it, the difference between 2013 15 is that was the early game right now the rates are now entering 2% to 3% which basically tells that this is a different environment like with the US Treasury breaking out of the 3% mark the 10 year Treasury that's that's telling us that this, this environment is now changing. Perhaps that's the first message that, that the global markets are telling us. Now, we talked to a Forex analyst from Alpari Capital yesterday who said that he will start to get worried if we see a sustained breach, maybe 3.1% yeah. for the U.S. 10-year <laughs> here. Now, if we do see a sustained breach for that, what will that mean for emerging markets like the Philippines? Are we prepared to weather the storm this time if we start to see um, a U.S. rate stay at 3% or above yeah. for, the ta for, the, for the medium term? The main message there is global fund managers would shift from a more careful stance. The money would not be easily let out, especially on more illiquid markets, such as emerging markets like the Philippines. And then our previously high valuations would now wind down to more conservative levels. So mm -hmm. that's what we're also seeing in the PSEI chart. All right. And uh, the BSP is holding its policy meeting on May 10. Mm -hmm. Given the movements we've seen in the Fed saying that, yes, we might be raising mm -hmm. rates at a faster clip, do you think they should start raising rates too, JC? Or do you think it's a bit too late now for the Banco Central? I think uh, they're, they're trying to address the concerns on infl inflation. So there's right. that potential need to raise rates. But then either way, whether we delay in the next couple of months, the, the Philippines will just follow what's going to happen in the U.S. and the global markets. This is the tail that wags the dog. Yeah. So even if they delay, they raise or not, it doesn't really matter. It, we're facing the inevitable in the next perhaps one to two years. That's really the shift. All right, so let's bring it home now, JC. Let's talk about the PSE pretty much wiped out all gains in the last 12 months. You'll mm -hmm. see this in the one-year chart at its lowest since April of last year. Mm -hmm. And really, most of these impressive gains we saw in 2017 happened on the, ba on the back of optimism for tax reforms. Mm -hmm. And given the fact that they've pretty much wiped out those gain gains mm -hmm. it's made over the last 12 months, do you think this, uh, it's, safe, it's fair to say that the enacted tax reforms have failed to deliver with regards to optimism of the PSE and earnings yeah. for some of the companies listed on the local boards? I think in the start, people were overly optimistic with the tax reform. But now we're realizing that, hey, it's not that net positive, especially with the rise in gas oil prices. So that affects the whole consumer, the, the hunger of all the consumer power in, amongst Filipinos. So that's the recoil effect. So earnings wise, it may have lessened the taxes, but generally in general consumption, the prices everywhere are boosted over the long period of time. Now, do you think this could actually ease off over time? People are debating now as to whether mm -hmm. or not this inflation rise, which is affecting the PSE yeah. and affecting earnings also, do you think this will stop, stop, uh, start we easing off in the next coming quarters, or do you think this is going to be rather sticky and something we'll have to deal with in the long term? Yeah, I think it's going to be something sticky. So definitely this environment, together with the technical and fundamental information that we have right now, it's going to be a more challenging environment. So we're at the 7.5 level. 7.529 at the moment, still yeah, declining. Still declining. So if this was a bull market, people would have rushed in at these levels. But now we're approaching the 7.2 level, which is at around our five-year five average PE, PE trailing PE at 15 to 16 times earnings. 
So at this point, this is our first sign of relief within that level. So what we want to see is how would the institutional buyers demand, um, react yeah. at this region? So if there's really demand for Philippines, foreigners would appreciate this, these valuations. And what would the foreign funds, though, be looking at if we get to that level? If that's the moment of truth for them where they mm -hmm. say, hey, maybe we should take a look at the Philippines again. What mm -hmm. do you think, uh, what kind of criteria would they be using to, to uh, determine whether or not to come back and give us a second chance? Oh, I think they, they'd probably look for the, cor the big caps that are still constant in their earnings growth. So you've got SM, but then at current levels, we don't want to rush in. So names like SM, Mega World, Ayala Corp, you want to wait. If Are you they, talking about how they're doing earnings wise or how they're doing like both uh, price structure? Earnings is just so so. They're mm -hmm. not really that exemplary anymore. So that's why there's more of a reason to be patient and conservative in the overall broad market of the Philippines. Okay. Now, the thing about 7 too, and I, I did mm -hmm. this a basic calculation from 9,050 mm -hmm. in late January. When you hit 7,240, 7, you're actually 20% below that yeah, low, yeah. Which, uh, by, is which some people define as being in uh, a bear, bear market. market. Yeah. What are the odds we might be in a bear market and be caught in a bear market over the next couple yeah. of months if we do start to mm. test those levels, JC? Yeah. So that's the textbook definition, like they, they yes. use the 20% benchmark. But to, according to statistics in the past 10 years, Mm -hmm. most, of the ra most of the drawdowns of the PSE, whenever we, we have a drawdown of 17 to 20 percent. Let's bring it up to the five-year yeah. chart at least so you, can, uh, yeah. you have a little bit to chew on there, Tracy. Go ahead. Whenever we see a drawdowns of 17, 20 percent plus, there's always a snapback recovery. So statistically, in the, next, in the next perhaps three months, six months, we see an initial recovery. So coming here, both technically, fundamentally, we could expect some s signs of relief at this level, but then the question now is, in the bigger picture, our upside is pretty limited. So if, if you catch 7.2, you're going to be, you're going to have a hard time set, the index would have a hard time going past 8.4. Mm -hmm. So that's just a sell on rally structure and it's going to continue. So things could be capped at about 8.4, yeah. 8.5. Yeah. And the other thing we have to worry about too is getting caught in a trading range like we saw in early 2017. You'll see there, actually very, it, it, mm. it, 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 it creates a certain symmetry because that channel they were trading at a 7274 actually, mm. if we do start to see a snapback, what are the odds we're going to be caught in limbo um, moving forward? In a lull, trading lull? In, in a trading lull or in, yeah. a console, in a tight trading range right there? Yeah. Well, at least that's a good thing. If, if we get to dip on 7.2 and it holds there, mm -hmm. that's the si signs of stability mm -hmm. at least. So we get some, st some sideways movement before we see a reversal. But over the three to six month time, even if we get a spike 8,000 to 8.3, I feel that the overall trajectory will just go sideways to down from oh. here. All right, so the, when the time is right, if there are opportunities out there, what sectors might actually uh, 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 show more bargains than others for you, JC. Where yeah. would you start going bargain hunting if you're brave enough to come into this market yeah. and look for deals? So the difference now and versus the regular bull market is you have to be extra selective. So my pick would be East West Bank. Mm -hmm. So this is a bank that's very focused on expansion, very consumer centric, and they've grown their earnings 48% from last year. So they, they've earned 5 billion 2017 and they're now trading at 35 billion market cap, which is at seven times PE. In fact, let me bring up the East-West Bank uh, yeah. year-to-date chart here just slowly for our, for our viewers. The, and, and if you're looking at East-West uh, Bank also, let's talk about the banks for a bit here. Digitization is a bit of a buzzword in this area, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And we have Metro Bank, for instance, saying they're going to start focusing on on digital banking and mm -hmm. moving away from um, oh, uh, looking to open fewer branches. Now, as somebody with a strong presence in online and digital yeah. platforms via investor grabs, what are the opportunities for banks if they do decide to make this digital shift, JC? I think that's really the, the trend. That's, ev that's where we're going. So to reach the, consu the, mass, the mass consumer, you really need to make the whole experience more available digitally. Mm -hmm. So that's really the trend, like the physical banks. I think in the next five to 10 years, a lot of the physical sites would close down and we're gonna rely on more FinTech products through mobile, through online. All right, um, SM Investments, let's talk about the big yeah. dog here. They've also laid out pretty uh, strong uh, uh, CapEx requirements, 75 billion to 90 billion pesos. Okay. And the other thing they're also looking at is that they're optimistic the reclamation project in Pasay is going to get greenlit soon. That's about, yeah. you're talking about 600 hectares there, mm -hmm. um, 100 billion pesos they're going to spend on that. What kind of upside does that, that provide a conglomerate like SM, which as you can see is actually uh, down by about a peso at the moment mm -hmm. and still fee, uh, just finding it hard to break past 980 points. Uh, 
uh, pesos yeah. uh, a share at the very at the very least. That's uh, one of the main resistances we're actually looking at for them. So while these corporate developments are definitely good, especially in the long term, in the short term we could clearly see the sentiment and the fund managers, especially SMS, the main proxy for the Philippine consumer story. So it's not yet out of the woods. The fact that it's trading below 900, we could, uh, if, I, if I were trading this, I'd pick it up at lower 800s, perhaps 800 to 820 or 850. Wow. Around so that's that a lot of ways yeah. to go actually for yeah. them. Is it, and given they are the big dog on the PSE mm. and seen as a proxy for the Philippine economy also, yeah. does that mean that the PSE really does have some room to, a lot of reason to actually come down even more? Yeah, if, if, if we're 7.5 now and it, there's no convincing move, we could expect another 3 to 5% drop. But at least the good thing there is we're more of nearing the bottom rather than experiencing a mo more of a bigger slump. So it's time to actually prepare yourself, pre prepare your cash levels, then how you're gonna execute and tranche in this coming dip. All right, Jay-Z, um, we have to let you go, but before we do mm -hmm. that, I know you wanted to talk to us about, try to provide some inspiration to these uh, yeah. markets, and you want to talk about this particular event called Inspire PH. Can you tell us more yeah. about this event, Inspire? Yeah. So as you know, in Investagrams, our main mission is to help Filipinos to be guided and educated in the stock market. But what we've realized is true financial freedom can't be reached in financial markets alone. So we want to help Filipinos engage in entrepreneurship, technological innovations, such as cryptocurrency, agricultural investing. So these are the kinds of things that we want to guide our community with. So in Inspire PH, April 28th at the SMX Convention Center, we'd like to invite everyone and see you there.